Hey, okay, cool. So, welcome to the uh, Children of the Tower recap. I'm kind of making this just to recap everybody because I want everybody to be on the same page here since a couple new people are coming into the game and uh, I don't want people to be behind. Yeah, so basically, um, everybody shows up, all the planeswalkers show up on this plane, and it's completely barren. There's geometric shapes everywhere, and all the ground is all the same. There's no difference. The only uh, noticeable, the only noticeable thing is that there's this tower in the center, and this big tower kind of takes up the entire scenery. It goes all the way up into the sky. It's uh, multiple miles in circumference. It's surrounded by five dead ley lines, and each of these ley lines corresponds to one of the colors of mana, right? So yeah. So the party hasn't met yet. They meet up at the tower because it's the only place really to go, and they decide, well, we better reactivate these ley lines so we can get out of here because they're trapped on the plane. They can't planes walk off. So the party decides to go to one of the ley lines, and they activate the black nexus first. Now, this is on purpose. They just choose one at random. Uh, when they activate the ley line, a bunch of monsters spawn, some demon-y things, and uh, they have to fight these demon goo monsters and then... Uh, move on to the next ley line. Um, it's also worth noting that there's no food or water, so they're actually getting uh, hungry and thirsty. So because they're getting thirsty, they go to the blue mana source next, and uh, when they activate the blue mana source, there's this giant tidal weight of water that just covers the entire area in uh, just pure water. Um, there's little islands connected by arches, so they're actually able to travel still, and this summons uh, water elementals um, that they actually don't encounter, I don't think, on the plane. And then it also summons drakes. And I promise that that is actually, yeah, a drake and not uh, whatever it looks like. So now they have water, so they want to go to get food. So they decide to go to the green mana source. Um, when they go there, they activate the green mana source, the ley line, by touching the inside of a tree. It's like kind of weird and metally on the inside. And what this does is it uh, awakens all these titanic beasts that are underneath the ground and um, the tree is actually um, on top of one of them. This action also just awakens wildlife all over the plane so they can hunt game, they can do all sorts of stuff to get food, scavenge. Food is no longer an issue for them. Yeah, so they head to Red Mana Source next, but before they can get there um, a pack of wolves and a couple dire wolves attack them and uh, they have to unfortunately kill all the wolves. They have to. Um, and no drama came about because of the killing of one of the wolves. Um, when they get to the Red Mana Source, it's got all these cliffs and mountains. And uh, by touching the bones of this ancient dead creature, um, they're able to awaken the Red Mana Source and these earthquakes and uh, like underground rumbling start happening and they realize that they've just unleashed not only uh reg just rock spreading across the plane but they've also unleashed underground sandworms yeah so on the way to the white mana source my first pc got eaten by a sandworm it was very cool it was one of the coolest deaths i've ever had yeah, so the rest of the party goes to the white mana source, and they find this robot guy standing there. Um, he's sad and a robot. He doesn't really seem to respond to anything. After a minute, they're able to get to him, and when they are able to touch his staff, um, he untransforms from this robot guy, and it turns out that he is a Vidalcan. Uh, he's pretty much just as confused about what's going on as the rest of the party is, but the info they are able to get out of him is that some kind of failsafe, some kind of magical failsafe, is likely what caused this. So they get back to the tower with the Vidalcan. Uh, it turns out that the tower is this hub of civilization on this plane. It's the only place with civilized life. They open a hidden staircase inside the tower, and it descends downwards all the way down into this huge underground complex. With all the ley lines activated, that means that they can free the rest of the plane from whatever failsafe caused this. And it is revealed that the leader of the entire um, civilization is this Sphinx. The Sphinx's name is Rajizu. 
He is a ancient, ancient sphinx, and he has guided this civilization of Vidalkin on this plane for millennia at least. And it actually turns out that he doesn't really like it when uh, people from off the plane show up. He's trying to keep his children, as he calls them, safe from the multiverse. So he asks everybody to leave. Uh, and he disables the machine, basically, that he has in his basement that is keeping interplanar travel from being able to happen um, uh, on and off the plane. So yeah, all the uh, party members of the Planeswalkers say their goodbyes. Um, each of them is offered a gift if he can fulfill their wish by Rajizu before they leave, because they did really save the plane. Even if he's asking him to leave, he's not a huge dick. So, you know, Jihad, um, the Khajiit, he gets a book of Sphinx knowledge, which allows him to uh, become a Pact of the Sphinx Warlock. The Naga Nizgru asks for plate armor and is given plate armor. The Tiefling Paladin Kairos asks for a Drake pet that he had tamed uh, during these little adventures to be taken care of well, and that was fulfilled easily, so that happened. And uh, Rain just wanted to go home. He was not having a good time, so thumbs up from Rajizu. That's what he wants too. So everybody goes back to their respective planes, and about a year passes. One by one, each of these players' planeswalkers are visited by the Vidalkin who they had saved earlier, the robot that turned into the Vidalkin. So the Vidalkin lets all of them know, because he's only got a couple seconds, oh, oh no, the Sphinx has died, Rajizu is dead. We've found out how to travel over... Uh, interplanar distances but we can only do it for a couple seconds please come back to the tower so we can talk to you so the heroes get back to the plane they talk to the vidalkin and they find out that rajuza wasn't just dropping dead for no reason he was actually murdered and the vidalkin don't know why or who or how uh, all they know is that they were able to track the planeswalker signature that they used to ravnica now, the only problem is that they were doing this tracking two months ago, and they only started being able to travel recently, so he might not still be there. After some discussion on what to do, the party does indeed decide to go to Ravnica to follow up on that clue first. Um, there are a couple other clues, but they're not really as relevant to finding the killer. They're more relevant to trying to protect the Vidalkin of the Tower from any more strikes against them from whatever foe they're facing. So yeah, you guys are in, uh, you're in Ravnica now. Yay! So far you've encountered a gruel minotaur shaman who spoke a language that nobody understood and they didn't understand English or common themselves. You've talked to a Boros paladin minotaur um, who is the mentor of the paladin in your party and he let you know that he thinks the Zur Ta clan are kind of really acting up recently over the last two months they've been causing a lot of trouble and they've been spotted all over the place and then you guys run into or well you don't run into but you meet up with one of jihad's old partners um a uh, simic hybrid known as skip skip sells information and for a price she tells you all of these different leads. But it really does seem like the Zurta are kind of behind a lot of this stuff. They're spotted everywhere. So then you guys run into my new PC, because my old PC is currently being dissolved in the stomach of a sandworm. The new PC is named Xanth, and she is a Golgari uh, Gorgon, Medusa, and she's also a divination wizard. And her whole deal is that she doesn't like people messing around with her. Her home which you are by being here so she's going to tag along just to make sure you guys don't cause any trouble so yeah the uh, last thing you guys are doing right now is you're looking for a Rakdos Minotaur performer because that Rakdos Minotaur performer has been spotted with a Zerta shaman and the Zerta shaman was killed but the Rakdos Minotaur was able to escape 
this information comes to you from Arkalak, the Boros Minotaur, who's saying Zerata above uh, the drawing I'm doing right now. And uh, currently you found out that he likes to do pit fights and that he's going to be doing one tonight. Yeah, so uh, that's my kind of quickish way of catching everybody up on everything. Uh, yeah.